one of the downsides of these clumsy birds. This ostrich uh, came out this morning to find that she had, you can see this uh, tendon is off to the side rather than through that hawk joint like it should be. Uh, from past experience, I know that once they are this size, this is probably close to a 200 pound bird, uh, there's no getting this back in place and making it stay. So they're in pain, they can't get to their feet. Um, they start thrashing till they cause flesh wounds as well. And uh, so easiest thing, or the only thing to do was quickly euthanize. And then we're gonna butcher for home use because of course it's a stressed bird without an inspected slaughter facility. So we have no problem consuming and making use of every part of this bird, but of course that can't be distributed. So. Between us and our dogs, uh, we'll eat well for a while, but this poor thing has uh, reached the end of her life at uh, approximately uh, 10 months old. Maybe 11 months, I'm not sure which batch this is, but that's, I say we're getting near 200 pounds. So she's quite a, a size to deal with. Uh, while she's warm is the easiest time to get the feathers plucked and then uh, start skinning and processing from there. So that's uh, what's in store for the rest of the day. Okay, starting the process. It, uh, I find it so much easier to pluck feathers when it's still warm. So I haven't gutted it yet or anything. So I'm gonna pull the feathers first. Then I can, they're much easier to clean up and sell to crafters or whatever later. Um, I can, the nice thing about cleaning ostrich feathers, they don't have oils like most feathers, so you can clean them up. Um, I use like Avon bubble bath or a good pet shampoo or something that rinses clean. And, uh, but yeah, if you grab feathers and pull against the grain, they just come out by a handful. Then I save them in uh, bags and wash them up and deal with them later. Uh, whole handfuls, they come out easy. <clears throat> So, of course, a lot of the feathers underneath are, um, but yeah, well, this is the spots you don't like, but anyway, I've just, uh, slid through at the hawks, got it uh, tied to a beam, uh, plastic underneath to catch the mess. I'm going to hose down this whole work area again later, but in the meantime, yeah, another handful of feathers out nice and easy. They're not coming easy enough. And the bigger feathers, just grab a smaller handful and, uh, yeah, like I say, as long as it's warm. Most of them come out easy. If you get you get to the wingtips, uh, they get a little tougher. Uh, there's times I've even, I've used pliers or even resorted to um, cutting them off at that point. Because sometimes once you get into the wingtips, they just don't come out very well. They're rooted right in, they're part of the meat. <clears throat> Now, here's uh, the shape of the bird starting to emerge as the feathers are being plucked. Uh, still got a lot of feathers to go. The other side of the bird uh, is still partly intact. But, um, yeah, say most birds, you're dealing with breast meat and everything else. There's very, very little breast meat on an ostrich. You've got basically bare ribs with the organs behind it. Um, your meat on an ostrich is in the drumstick and the main part of the body. So um, after the feathers, of course, you've got to get it all gutted and skinned. And uh, But anyway, my first order is to get all the feathers bagged up and then... <laughs> my helpful Maggie dog laying there beside my big bag of feathers. Um, yeah, pluck as many feathers as I can and then get skin off. Um, at this point, I won't be dealing with the hide. I'm going to roll it up and throw it in the freezer. And hopefully, I don't know much about tanning hides, but it's a skill I want to learn. So I'm just saving a few up in the freezer right now to practice on when I get around to it. So hopefully that'll be uh, another topic for future videos. But for right now, we're plucking and then skinning and gutting. Or cutting and skinning, as it may be. <clears throat> All right. Now, most of the feathers pluck pretty easily. There's just about, oh, four or five inches worth 
of the white feathers in the wings that are so deeply rooted I end up cutting them. There's just it's too much of a hassle and you get flesh attached. But here's a neat little fact that not everybody knows. You've got a couple of claws on ostrich wings. So if they ever happen to get you on the ground and beat on you, this is part of how they can do some damage. These are like dog claws. Look at the size of these suckers. They're pretty tough. So there's two claws on each wing tip. And uh, I'm almost done plucking this body. I got the tail done and everything else. Um, just one more wing to go. A few I'll pull out with pliers and the rest I'll just snip off because it's not worth battling any further. And then we're into gutting and skinning. Yay. Okay, on the first few cuts, uh, straight up the belly, uh, working on opening up the leather so we can skin the rest of the body out. Um, first thing you see here is a whole lot of that wonderful liquid gold ostrich fat. Now this stuff gets rendered down to be a rub for arthritis, uh, healing for burns and all sorts of serious skin conditions. It's got, you know, you can just look it up and it's got magical healing uh, properties. So it's in high demand and uh, um, I'm just gonna package it separately for now and freeze it. I'll probably grind some into my sausage as we go along. Um, but um, some of it, yeah, I did some rendering down hot last year and I found it goes rancid too fast. I think I need to look into and learn maybe some cold press methods for fat. So I'm open to suggestion and I will be searching that for my next options. So anyway, just getting into opening up the carcass after all the feathers have come out and getting ready to deal with uh, getting ready, getting rid of the innards, setting aside the organs and um, getting the meat processed off this bird. All right, opened up just a little bit further. Um, so you can see separating the uh, skin from the inner membranes is not so hard. Quick little swipe of the knife. I'm just using your average little fillet knife here and uh, just some quick swipes and it uh, takes that fascia apart real easy. Um, this stuff, it's amazing how tough, see just picking away at her. <laughs> it's amazing how tough this inner membrane is. It's really really tough stuff and um, but I'm going to peel some of that off and start taking out the fat in chunks uh, and throwing that in separate buckets to freeze. Find oh, a little bit of bruising there from this thing sitting on his uh, flopping down on the ground for a little bit before I found him. Um, but there's a little bit of uh, fat inside the breast that is really hard to separate from the skin. So anyway, I cut through the best I can. Some ends up staying on the hide and I'll scrape that when I'm actually prepared to learn how to deal with the hides. In the meantime, there was a, a really uh, calloused patch on the breastbone of the skin. So I took that right out, threw it to the dog, and uh, yeah, next stage is to take some of this fat off and go deeper and uh, start taking out some organs. Uh, get the guts out, get um, down to the nitty gritty of butchering. Okay, it's a long day. Butchering's not my strong point, I'm not fast, I'm not good, but I don't let the carcass go to waste. So at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, that's what matters. So, still taking tons and tons and tons of fat off this thing. And uh, almost got the hide off, the neck is skinned. One knee is detached and uh, given to the dog, so she's a happy camper. And uh, finish taking that skin off, take the neck off, and then just start carving the rest up and getting it in the freezer. Um, okay, just want to show you a really neat point here. Here is the contents of the gizzard. The um, birds, as you know, they swallow gravel to grind their feed. And you've got one end where the food goes in. You can still see grains and uh, the grasses and hay uh, still fairly recognizable. But as it went through the gizzard, it got more fine ground, more mushed, and the rocks get uh, smaller and smoother. You can tell some of these rocks have been in there quite a while, but 
even so, some of them are it's fair sized rocks in some of those. But you know, some of these little ones are really well polished. And you can tell they've been in there quite a while. So it's a real uh, assortment of big rocks, little rocks, and uh, grains, and of course, the hay products. So for anyone who's curious, that's what it looks like when uh, you empty out the, the crop on a ostrich. Okay, I'm really surprised how much fat I'm getting off this one. This is a turkey roaster, and it is full of fat off this ostrich. And that's just a small fan roast um, that I've got to bag up and put away, but um, yeah, the rest, oh, okay, the rest of our ostrich is coming apart pretty good. We've got one drumstick already gone and in the freezer. Uh, that kind of takes the place of a turkey dinner someday because it is one huge thing to cook all at once. I've got all these different cuts to dig out of here and um, get wrapped up and thrown in the freezer. <laughs> what you got there, Maggie? Come here, Mags. Show me your bone, Maggie. Hey, hey. That's a good bone, isn't it? Do you like your bone? What a happy girl. Frankie's gonna get your bone. Look out, Frankie wants your bone. That a girl. That's a good girl, Maggie. That's a nice bone. That's a nice bone, Mags. Look at that bone, what a nice bone. You're so proud of that. <laughs> Oh, what a girl. <laughs> Good girl, Maggie.